is good to see you all. Eugene, this is a fast-moving story. Tell us where we are right now. Yeah, right now we know they are still negotiating, right? Like we say, like we say this every week, but it is, it is. We really, like we said, we, Eugene, we need that puppy cam you and I have talked about, or we can like look in and see, read the body language, see how things are going. Exactly. But we also have what we, we started with that, that working list of the things that could come or that could go. My sense is that today's conversations really zeroed in on paid family leave and whether or not we'll see that Medicare expansion. Is that your understanding as well? No, absolutely, because that was one of the things that we knew going into it that Joe Manchin could kind of do without, right? The federal um, paid leave, it went from 12 weeks. It's um, and then President Biden kind of shocked a few people last week saying that it was now at four weeks. So that means that um, that is something that they might continue to whittle down, which I will say is not the promise they made to the American people, right? That is going to be something that working parents are going to have a big issue with, despite the fact that there's all these other billions and billions of dollars in this bill. Um, on the Medicare aspect of that, you're gonna see some people like Bernie Sanders have a big issue with that. And so this isn't as if like they, they finished the bill, Speaker Pelosi said they're at 90%. If they get to 100%, they could still disagree, but they are talking differently about the bill for the first time President Biden's kind of letting us know the conversations that he's been having instead of saying, you know, not negotiating from the podium right there, giving us information. So that does indicate that they have they are whittling down and we might get a vote possibly on the um, bipartisan infrastructure bill on Wednesday, meaning that whatever framework they agreed on to the re um, for reconciliation, um, progressives have signed on to. So Sochi, as always, Eugene sort of beat me to the punch there, which is that what I am noticing, too, is that the way that they are talking about this is changing. Notably to me is Senator Warren, who very often is among those who holds the line on some of the most progressive causes and issues, saying, yeah. hey, guys, like we're getting close to getting it done, and let's not lose the focus on the fact that this will still be big, it will still be historic. What does it tell you, Sochi, as a messaging person, that the messaging has now shifted? Well, the important part about this is negotiations are, that's not a bad word. Compromise is not a bad word. And that's what you heard Jen Psaki say. And that's what you're hearing Democrats say now. They understand the original bill does not have 50 votes, which means the Democrats would end up with nothing. That is not an option. This is why they are coming to the table and compromising and talking to Joe Manchin. And you continue to see the um, talks today. What you'll hear from Democrats over the next few days and ahead of 2022, and this is the way that they'll sell this package, is that it's still a historic investment in child care, in education, in the care economy. It's the second largest climate bill that we have passed. So there is significant progress we've made. You've also heard from Jen Psaki saying that on climate, you know, they're, they're, if they're going um, a certain route and, and they might not get everything that they want, but at the end of the day, he will use executive action to ensure that they are meeting their climate goals. And so this is one big step in the right direction. And not to mention, they're also going to pass infrastructure. This is a big deal because at the end of the day, you know, Donald Trump, he um, tried to pass this. Republicans tried to pass this. They couldn't deliver. So what Joe Biden is going to do is he's going to go into the midterm election with, with a huge investment in families and then an infrastructure bill that... Um, members of Congress can go home and sell. Okay, so this, of course, Jamil, not done yet. And Arizona's Kristen Cinema was not at today's meeting in Delaware. She is, of course, drawing a lot of criticism from Democrats for not being completely transparent about what it is she wants from these negotiations. Here's Congressman Ro Khanna. Take a listen. My concern with Senator Sinema is, why are the rules different for her? Why doesn't she go on shows like yours? Why doesn't she explain herself? If she's shifted her position on Trump tax cuts, explain it. I guess I've never seen a politician, including, frankly, the former President Trump, who just totally ducks answering questions of the media or constituents. And that's my frustration with her. She's not clear about what she believes. Jamil, your sense at this point of Sinema's role in this process? 
definitely, she seems to not understand the full obligations and requirements of someone in her position, someone who is required to not only listen to her constituents, but also to, frankly, be in contact with her party. I mean, to not explain at all what she's doing is, frankly, a dereliction of duty. But with regards to Joe Manchin, unfortunately, we know exactly why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, unfortunately, he's, he's got a personal financial stake in the coal industry. He's got large campaign contributions coming in from coal. And unfortunately, he's doing this to the detriment of his constituents in West Virginia, a state that is less likely to have adults who are you know, working right now full time and also putting things contingent on work, putting this child aid contingent upon people finding work, I think is actually uh, more hurtful to people in his state than many others. You know, Sochi, I think when we talk about why certain things are on the chopping block, there are the rationales that Jamil just laid out. But then there are other things that I find, I continue to find really hard to rationalize. So the expanded child tax credit, universal pre-K, still two points of contention in the spending bill. And a Washington Post op-ed education expert, Elliot Haspel, writes that without these child care provisions, America is, quote, headed into the child care wilderness. There is a limited window to build a new system where the old one has failed. It cannot be allowed to slam shut on the outstretched fingers of the nation's parents and children. So, G, I I've asked a question sort of over and over throughout the course of this, specifically when it, it comes to these policies, which is, if there is not the political appetite for getting this done now, then when were, will there ever be the political appetite to get this done? And with rage moms ready to head to the polls in November 2022, why is there not the necessary enthusiasm for these issues to get it done? Well, you're right, Alicia. I think that if we don't get it done now, it'll be really difficult um, to get it across the finish line later. And I think that the White House understands this. And they've made the point over and over again that, you know, they want something and something is better than nothing. And they're still lots of investments being made. But I think that Democrats will need to, to to message this ahead of the midterm elections, because you're right. Women make up, um, th that's exactly why, why Democrats won in the last election and in the midterm election before that is because of women. Um, they're the ones, in, you know, in many communities who get their entire household out to vote, and especially in the Latino community. And there will need to be some aggressive uh, messaging that kind of talk, talks to women about what exactly is in this package and how it helps them. I think the child tax credit has been extremely helpful to families, and you will need to see a White House and a, a, a Democrats in general kind of um, talk directly to women and to families about how this benefits them. This is also in focus, and we're going to be all watching this next Tuesday when Virginia goes to vote, and we're going to be looking at those suburban counties. We're going to be looking specifically at suburban women and how they turn out, the rates at which they turn out, who they turn out for. That may provide us some more answers to that question. So